So you want to write a movie. That's a good starting point, right? You've got an idea of a plot in your head, some emotionally charged characters, and that's what you really need, right? To just start typing away. Wrong. One of the most important aspects of any screenplay is its structure. And today, we're going to be talking all about how to structure a great screenplay. But before we begin, if you like this video, give us a subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our free Leon Unity lesson content. This is a new series that's beginning today and will be continuing for hopefully a long time to come. The three act, eight sequence structure of screenwriting is where a movie has a beginning, middle and end, or in film parlance, act one, two and three. It is the glass that surrounds the fluid-like structure of storytelling together. The three acts of a feature film screenplay give excellent balance to what is basically a complete mess of a story most of the time when it first comes up in your head. And the eight sequences are built inside these three acts to keep driving the momentum forward, each sequence ending with basically a question that says, what happens next? <gasps> each sequence has a yes or no question that is asked at the start and answered by the end. The question pertains to the plot and helps you as a writer drive the story forward. You're continually having your audience ask questions and then the story answers them. This method keeps the audience gripped and it keeps them on the edge of their seats. It doesn't matter whether you're doing a comedy or you're doing a drama. The whole thing of any story is to keep your audience engaged. Just like much of YouTube, engagement is more important. So please leave a comment, like, you know, subscribe, all that stuff below, you know, if you want to. Think of them almost like chapters. They segment your story into different sections so that as you're going through it, you know at about 15 to 25 pages, this is when the sequence should be ending. And though it's not mandatory, it does tend to follow the structure set out by Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces. If you're trying to learn how to write any story, I highly recommend it. It's helped both me and visionaries like George Lucas construct our worlds. So if you want to check it out, there is a link down in the description below um, to buy it on Amazon. These eight sequences generally are a really good way to get your audience to keep guessing what comes next in the story. And in case you get lost in this video, there is a cheat sheet for the eight sequence structure which you can fill out yourself with all the pertinent details and build yourself a really nice, easy structure to work with. So go ahead and check it out. Link is in the description. Let's start with the sequences in act one. Sequence one, business as usual and the rules of the world. We writers tend to say, you can establish any crazy idea you want in your screenplay and anyone will buy it, including a talking raccoon that is best friends with a tree, as long as you do it in the first 15 minutes of your movie. If you don't, then your audience is gonna kinda go, what? It is your chance as a writer to mold the world to your will, to bend everything and, um, wait, that sounds a little bit like a, like an evil god. Um, I'm, I, I don't have a god complex. Anyway, my point is, this is the way you're gonna teach your audience what's going on in the world, who they are, what they're doing and what the consequences of what they might not be doing would be. It can be used to set the scene before you go into the meat of your story. Sequence number two, the inciting incident and the call to adventure. The second sequence closes out the beginning of our movie and as such must set into motion the events that are going to carry through until the climax. The inciting incident is the incident that puts the hero of our story on track. For example, in Star Wars, the inciting incident is the droids going down to Tatooine. They come down to Tatooine, everything changes. Everything changes for the main character's story. You're still introduced to Luke Skywalker, see his life as normal, and then eventually you almost learn the ways of the Force. If you want to come with me to Alderaan... Hello there. It is the motivating factor that creates the circumstances for the main character of our story. In other words, what happens to our protagonist that changes their life from sequence one, business as usual, to go to the call to adventure. So what is the call to adventure? If you're a fan of my show, My Life is a Video Game, link in the description below. The inciting incident is when Don gets sucked into the video game. The call to adventure is after he's met Kara and she asks him, What's your name? It's, uh, it's Don. I'm Don DeWitt. I'm Kara. Either gonna fight, or it's game over. One or more of the protagonists will make a conscious decision to engage in the events surrounding the inciting incident. It is where the story, not the plot, truly begins and it becomes the defining moment that is driving the protagonist forward throughout the story. Act two is driven by a single question, what is sometimes called the act two question. The act two question is not quite the same as a single sequence question, but it is basically the main question that is being asked throughout the entire story. It sort of holds it all together to prevent it kind of like meandering away on its path. The act two question is really something you should be asking yourself with every scene that you write. Does it progress the story to the designated answer that you have in mind? Sequence number three, the beginning of the journey and the first obstacle. I'm going on an adventure. 
For better or for worse, whether they're happy about it or not, the protagonist has now decided that they want to go on an adventure. That they basically want to engage in the events that will drive the story forward. Now, a question I'd like to ask myself here is, what is the worst thing that could possibly happen now? Now, excluding things like the apocalypse and spontaneous combustion of your protagonist, it's an excellent way of looking at your setting a story and ratcheting up the tension by putting an obstacle in the way of your protagonist. Now, the antagonist is the person who stands directly in the way of the protagonist's goals. So, if they're the ones who are causing all the problems for the protagonist, it might be a good idea for the first uh, issue to be related to him. It is their first trial of their worthiness to answer the Act 2 question. Sequence number four. First combination and the midpoint. Okay, so we've got our protagonist through the first trial and they've proven their worth. Now we are reaching the first culmination, the part of the story where emotion reaches its first peak. It's a mini climax where characters can come together and we have a revelation in the story. Now, whatever you decide for your story, the fourth sequence should continue the dramatic trend of the third sequence, rising the tension and rising the action to an emotional peak. The midpoint might be one of the most structurally crucial moments in your screenplay. It is the moment by which the whole screenplay hinges on its axis. It could be a big revelation that changes the protagonist's world view entirely of what they've ever known, or even change the nature of the act two question by providing an emotional pivot for the actions of the protagonists. It can make or break a story because it's usually around about the hour mark where emotional fatigue starts to set in for the audience. The events of the midpoint are used to refresh the story and keep the audience invested. Sequence number five, happy, sad, or sad, happy. Because at this point, we've been using the sequences to ratchet up the tension continuously, it can be time to take a breather a little bit. Let the characters talk, hash out their issues, and decide if the journey, if they're really on, is worth it at all. The whole reason people always say you need to relate to your protagonist is because your audience needs to connect to them. And when they're going through an emotional crisis, I feel like the audience should be as well. Depending on the emotional impact of your midpoint, now is a good time to have the reverse emotion. Sequence five can be a happy moment leading into a sad one, or a sad moment leading into a happy one. This sequence is generally speaking a great chance for character development, and can be quite dynamically used by the writer to really flesh out what you want to flesh out. It's personally probably one of my favorite sequences in the actual scripting process. Sequence number six, the second act climax. So we are here at the final battle, or up. Depending on how you've told your story up until now, the second act climax can sort of be where your audience thinks everything in your story has been leading to. That was the point of the second act question. Your protagonist, or even the antagonist, might think that they've won the day at the end of the sequence, but things are never that simple. We can't just wrap it up here. We do, however, have to answer the second act question. So this is the sequence where you have to answer the question that's been like driving the story forward up until this point. In this case, this sequence is very much the beginning of the end, or the end of the middle, because this is the middle act. And Sequence, um, sequence seven, the climax and the twist. All the pieces are now set. The ultimate climax between hero and villain is about to begin. Now, act three is also driven by a singular question, just like act two was. It is driven by a question that will continue to drive the story forward right to the end. Now, usually right at the start of act three, there is something called the twist or the third act reversal. It's a part of the story that flips everything on their head. It makes everything not so simple, but for the love of God, don't make it a deus ex machina. And in many good stories, the third act reversal and the twist has been well thought out. Usually a good Chekhov's gun, a playwright called Anton Chekhov will say you don't put a gun on the table in the first act if you're not gonna use it in the third. It can be used for character deconstruction or for shock and awe on the audience, or it can even be used to solve an issue that the character is facing in his most dire moment. This is where I say try not to make it a deus ex machina because it's usually best to have it as something that's been planted since the beginning. So something like the audience has known all along, but suddenly it switches on in their brain when they see it on the screen. Now with the twist in place, you've got the big climax to finish. This is your big moment, your main event, your finale. Make it count. Sequence eight, resolution and aftermath. After the big climax, we're hit with one final sequence. Whether it has a question or not is sometimes up for debate. I prefer to actually keep a question going right at the very end so that your audience is invested and it's not just la la la, happy ending, let's all wrap things up. How does everything get resolved? Does your hero do a dance off to save the universe? Do they hit 88 miles an hour and go back to the future? Whatever way you resolve your climax, this sequence is the place for it. The resolution follows the characters out back into either their normal world or into a whole new world. I prefer the whole new world because that usually means that Everything has changed as a result of your story. Your story was an important moment in these characters' lives, and as through the transference of protagonist to your audience, 
in the audience's lives. They feel like now they've seen something that was important in their lives. And that's where the resolution really comes into play. So that's the eight sequence structure. Sooner or later, I'll be going into greater depth with some bonus stuff on this, which will go in depth about my, some of my favorite movies, Rocky, Back to the Future, Star Wars, Star Trek Through the Wrath of Khan. And don't forget, you can download our eight sequence cheat sheet from the link in the description below. By doing so, you can easily fill out things like sequence questions, act questions, who your characters are, and what you would like to happen in each sequence and based on the eight sequence structure we've just gone over in this video. It's a handy guide and hopefully it'll give you a lot to work with. So thank you very much. And uh, you know, if you like what you see here, please go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, etc. blah, blah. Hit that notification bell, smack that like button, smack that notification bell, smack that press subscribe button, blah, 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 smash it, smash, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But you know, just uh, if you like stuff, share it around. Hope you like it. That's about it. That's all I got.